everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make these fold flat gift bags, which are using 8x8 paper pads. So I've had quite a few people request for me to do 8x8 kind of size gift bags because of a lot of the um, paper craft or the paper boutique and the paper tree paper pads that they've been getting because they are all 8x8. So I thought I would use one of the paper tree paper pads, which I'll show you in a minute. They're Christmas ones. And this is, I've just put bags within a bag. So there are, I think I've got about 10. They're all fold flat. I've used this lovely fabric um, ribbon that I've had for so long now. And uh, I thought, you know what, it's going to go really well with this. I know it's quite, um, I guess, more of a Scandinavian kind of um, detail and pattern there, but I think it still works really, really well. So I've just pulled out the toppers from the pad, and this is how one of the, the boxes look like. Now it is shorter, but that's optional, and I'll show you that in a moment, because this is actually seven high, so it's eight by three by seven, but it can be eight by eight but I just wanted to do this detail and kind of conceal the ribbon underneath, so all optional, and I'll show you that when we get to it. But if I just pull one of them out here, you can see again how it all folds nice and flat. So I thought this would make a really nice, some, well, it would. I think it'd be really nice to sell at a craft fair. It would also be nice as maybe a raffle prize. Obviously, it's perfect for yourself as well to do, you know, to keep all your to put all your presents in for your friends and family near a Christmas time. But I think it's just, yeah, it's quite a nice little gift in itself as well. You could give this to a friend. So yeah, I really like them. So like I said, I think I'm gonna be doing the 10th one and that's all using papers from one paper pad. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so the one I'm using is the paper tree. So the paper boutique and the paper tree are all the same company. And they're, I think it's, well, yeah, Creative World of Crafts. So, and they're, they're very, very similar. I'm not entirely sure why the paper tree and why the paper boutique, like why there are two different ones because they are so similar. But anyway, that, um, yeah, so some of you will have some of these and some of you will have the others, but this is a Christmas tale. It's really, really lovely. So I picked up the paper kit because I, I always say I repeat myself so much, but I love the toppers that come with them. So the kit's always good because you get the decorative papers and you also get the toppers. So this one here had 32 die cut toppers and 20 tags and then you also get your papers. And then this one here is just the paper pad. So like I said, it all came together. So I had a lot of papers. So what I've done is I've gone through, pulled out, basically I used, all I've got left now is that. So I've got one of each paper. So that's perfect for cards. So I'm gonna make some nice cards with these using these toppers here. And then these are just gonna be nice to put on Christmas gifts and things like that. These tags I will be putting onto these gift bags. What I'll probably do is get some baker's twine and just tie them around the top of the handle when I come to actually give them. So I'll probably pop a load of these out, put them in a little plastic sleeve and put them with those bags until I decide what I'm gonna do with them. Like I said, I might, it might get donated for a raffle prize, it might go to charity shop or I might use it myself. I've got a lot of projects going on at the moment. So yeah, it's, it's nice that it's all done and then I can decide what I'm gonna do with it later. And you also get this here that you can buy which is the sentiment topper pad. It's five by five, you get 64 sheets. And they're so cute, really, really lovely. And I thought this would be nice in a mini album as well, because the, you know, they're perfect for journaling on the back, but they're great for big gift tags and just as toppers on Christmas cards. So if you want to make really cr quick Christmas cards, then these are going to be perfect. So you do get that as well. So this is my last kind of, like I said, one to make because I've pulled out so many of the papers. So you need, it's three and a half sheets of eight by eight for each bag, but the other half can be used on another bag. So there's no waste. So the only half pieces that I do have left are literally a handful because a lot of them got used on the other bag, if that makes sense. So there I've only got three halves left, but they'd be great. And like I said, they're gonna get used in cards so that it's, it's decent sized scraps that you have left. But if you make two bags, then you would need seven, yeah, seven pieces of eight by eight for two bags and there'd be no waste. Okay, so hopefully that makes, makes sense. You'll see when you go along. You want two pieces of eight by eight and then you want three pieces of four by eight. Two of them are gonna be for the side, one for the base. So if you do have odd bits of paper, you know, you one of them's gonna be on the base, you're not really gonna see it anyway, but the side ones, obviously I wanted them to look the same. So with your eight by eight pieces, one of them, now this is when it's optional. So the to make them fold flat, you need to score at one and a half, okay, at the bottom. So if it's directional, this needs to be the bottom here. 
If you don't want them to fold flat, then you don't need to do that score line at all. And if you don't want the top to fold over, then you don't need to do this piece either. So if you are just want them completely in their 3D form and not fold flat and don't have anything folded, you'll just want this one piece of 8x8 with nothing on it at all. And that'll be the same for the front. You won't do any scoring on these pieces. But if you do, like I said, you want to score at one and a half, and then you want to score at seven and one eighth of an inch along here. Now you can do seven and fold it over, but it might just give you, it might, I'm trying to explain, like when we get to it, it make more sense, but it might put a bit of pressure on the corners. And if you're slightly off with sticking it together because it's deconstructed, having that one eighth of an inch will just kind of give you a little bit of just leeway really for any kind of slight errors or you know differences in sticking it all together again it should all make sense when it comes together it's very very easy then with the other piece of eight by eight you just want to score at seven and one eighth again if it's directional make sure because this is the top here seven and one eighth okay like i said you can do seven but you'll see when we get to it i think it's just good just to have that little bit to play around with. Then for your base piece, this is four by eight, you want to score at half an inch and three and a half, and that's along the four inch side. Okay, and you can just fold and burnish those score lines. Okay, then for your side pieces, again, two pieces of four by eight, and first of all, along the long side, you're going to score. Now, again, if you, yeah, so you want to score at one, okay, and then if you want it to fold flat, you want to score at two and a half. Okay, then rotate it onto the short side and you're going to score at half an inch and three and a half. And then you also, if you want it to fold flat, score at two down to the first score line. Now from there, you also then, if you want, want to score from the bottom of that two inch that line to the bottom left and right of that rectangle that you will have. If I turn it over, can you see that's much better? So if you come down here, that's that two inch one, you then can score down to here and down to here using your metal ruler and your stylus. Because this is a paper and, and it's very, very easy, I'm not bothering, I haven't scored that, I'm just gonna fold it and it will naturally fall into that position. So it's optional. If you've got a heavyweight cardstock, I would advise that you do just score down there. Not down to this bit, just within this rectangle here, just from that, that middle score line, okay? Do that on two pieces because that's your sides. So hopefully I've broken that all down and explained what you need to do. Then if you want to do again the same handles as me, you want two pieces of ribbon that are roughly, this is ten and a half inches. And I've got, again, it's the last of that. And I managed to literally use every bit up, so it's been quite satisfying. Yeah, it's nice when you can use up bits and pieces. It's entirely up to you how you stick it together. Now, if you are going to be having maybe lots of things in these gift bags and you want something that's going to be a bit more stronger, then I would reinforce the base with some grey board or some very thick cardstock, okay? Because this is only a 160 GSM, so it's, you know, it is more of that borderline paper card. But in these gift bags, it's just nice for some chocolates or some, you know, pair of socks, just those little, nice little token presents. So I'm not worried at all about, you know, reinforcing these. So with the two pieces of 8x8 eight eight, you will have one where you've scored at 7 and 1 eighth. you want to fold that over. Okay that's going to be that decorative kind of piece at the top and the reason I've done it is because I'm concealing the ribbon ends underneath but it is optional. You may be doing your ribbon and your handles very differently and in that case you won't fold that over but if you have you want to fold that one and again on the other one make sure you're folding the right end so this is again if your paper's directional then you will be but again it's that shorter piece at the top. This one here you're going to fold back this way like so because that's going to be the fold flat piece. So that's those two pieces there ready. Your base you would have already done that folding um, scored and burnished and then these side ones here again do the fold and burnish those the bottom one the one inch you want to fold up and then that next one you want to fold out okay again if you've then scored in there then that's you know that's fine those will naturally fall into place when you go to fold it flat but you just want to pinch that middle score line down to the top of that one there it's all just going to help you when you come to fold it at the end. So I'm just going to do that again on this one here. Okay, but because again I'm working with a paper, it's a bit softer, it's a little bit more forgiving 
um, and it won't crack. Okay, so now with the bottom of the side pieces, so I've got that two inch score line down to here, you've got that bottom one inch score line here, okay? Excuse the light, I've got some sun just coming through now, but hopefully by the time I do this video, it won't, you know, it's not gonna come in too much onto my, um, my mat there. So I'm just cutting away the two little rectangles in either corner. And then I've just taken a little wedge out while I've done it as well. So I'll show you again on this one. Turn it over, you've got these little rectangles here and here. Just cut up to the first score line, like so. And then just cut away on an angle, both sides. And again, I'm just going to cut up and just take away any overhang that there might be. That's all the cutting you're doing. So that is the only, I'd say, waste for the bin that you're going to have. Any other waste might have been one half of, say, this piece, because there's your one, two, three, and then your half of the eight by eight. So the other half of that will go into, you know, your scrap. So now I'm going to use double-sided tape for all of this. It is a strong double-sided tape. It's my scotch tape, but um, you can use liquid glue by all means. So I'm just going to run, because this is a half-inch tab, my half-inch tape fits perfectly. So I'm just going to run that along both sides there, okay, and then you want to pop it along the bottom of each of your tabs there, and then along the side as well. Okay, I'm going to do that again on this one here. Okay, so that's that already. Then with these pieces here, I'm going to run inside, again this is only if you've done these, just along the top there of that flap. Okay, and again just along the top there so that when we peel that off it will fold over but we need to do our little holes on that first. So what you want to do is I'm going to use my little punch here. Is that sunlight coming in now? Okay, so I've just pulled the curtains now so hopefully the lighting's a bit better. Right. So you've got your two pieces here, flip them over so it's just easier for you to see. And I got my ruler and you want to come in two and a half inches on each side. Again, that's completely optional. You just want to pop a little dot. You might want to do it on the reverse side so you don't see the pencil, but I will be removing it with this anyway. So along that score line, two and a half. So I'm just putting a pencil right on the score line so I know I'm going to get rid of it. And then one, two, two and a half. So I've popped a pencil mark there at two and a half and five and a half. Okay, and then what you can do is pop it over the top of this other one. Make sure they are perfectly lined up, because I'm going to punch through both at the same time. And you want to just make sure that sits right over the score line. So you've got half and half. Can you see there? So now when we fold it in half, you should have half the semicircle showing on each side. So now the ribbon will go in perfectly along the top. Okay. You go through both at the same time, just saves you a bit, you know, just quicker. But again, you want to do this as, however many times you want to make these gift bags, you'll need to be doing this that amount of times. So now I'm going to grab my base. I'm going to do the handle at the end. You can do it now if you want to, but I'll just do it at the end. So I'm going to take off the backing on one side and I'm just going to sit this right over the top. Like so. And if you fold it over, you can check that you're all in line there and you've got everything where it should be. And then grab the next one. Just very carefully make sure you get it right just above the score line. Again, fold it over. You can see that everything is in place. And then I'm going to keep it that way because I find it easier to stick everything down. I'm going to take the backing off of the base. Now if you're not having these pieces fold down, yours will be the full eight inches height. But because we've, we needed to have some form of a tab to attach the sides, your side pieces will be seven tall, so you will have one inch. Um, but it looks nice, I've made lots of gift bags with the sides slightly shorter, so it is supposed to be like that if you've done it that way. If you're doing it my way, then it will be one eighth of an inch-ish short. But like I said, I think it's best to have that then do it, you know, exactly to seven. Okay, so just stuck that one down again. You're just focusing on your score lines each time. And then again, just sliding that one under. 
quite easy to line up because you're also making sure that this score line runs with this one and so on so everything will find its home and then flip it over and you just want to start on your side so I'm just going to take the backing off of this one first hold that in and just start from the bottom and just kind of tack it into place and again all the score lines should line up so this is what I mean with the top so when I fold that over there's that tiny bit where this is slightly higher but if you do the score line at the same height, I mean you can but you run the risk if you stuck this slightly off or you started from the bottom a little bit higher than you should have that little one eighth, eighth of an inch will hide all of that so deconstructed box, um, boxes or gift bags it's quite handy to have that little bit of an overhang at the top if you've been making these a long time and you are always spot on with your sticking and everything then do that score line at seven rather than seven and one eighths okay so but I do think that this is a bit more foolproof <laughs> so yeah if you do sometimes think oh I was slightly off with that this will just hide those little bits for you and grab the other one and you're just basically working along but it's quite good first of all just to tack the bottom and then you can just slowly lay it down and it will just all find its home go inside each time and just put some pressure on it you might find it easier with liquid glue just because you've got that wiggle room and that time obviously it's a lot more um, instant with the double-sided tape so just use what works for you and then again just going to go from the side and just kind of run your finger and your thumb along there as you work your way up to the top and that way you know everything will stay lined up and then the last one again just tacking the bottom in place and then the rest you can just slowly lay it down like so now depending on whether or not you scored within the box I didn't because I'm using the paper but you basically want to just push kind of at the bottom of that two inch score line like so that back score line there that you've done should line up perfectly and just push it kind of pinch the whole thing in together and it will just all into place so again for speed you know you don't need to worry about doing that score line there if it's paper it will just fold but if it's a cardstock then I would do because you don't want it to crack you can see now just how neatly everything is so next I just need to add my ribbon what I'm gonna do yeah I will do that now so I've got my hot glue on because I just use that to tack it in place now I want to make sure I've got the pattern coming through Again, this is quite thick on a paper, so do kind of go, well, I don't think you're all going to have the same ribbon as me. I can't remember where I actually got this from. It was from a car fair, I'm not sure. So I'm just popping it in there, and just with a bit of hot glue, I'm just kind of tacking it in place, because once we fold this piece over the top, it will just conceal and secure all of that. But I do like this look. I've done it on a few gift bags. I think it looks really nice. And bring it right up close there to the top. And let that sit there for a sec. Take off the backing on the very top piece and then because that glue's still a bit wet as well that will all help fold the whole thing over and you will have that nice finish. Okay obviously if you've got a gift tag then put that on before if, you, if you've hole punched it and stuff but I'm going to tie mine with twine. I like to do little bows and dangles and stuff like that nearer the time. That's if I end up using these for myself so um, yeah I always like I tend to always add my tags last. Again, I'm just going to feed that through and do the same on this one. Okay, and there we have already a really nice little fold flat gift bag which is just such a nice size. You'll get lots of nice little treats in there. So then it's just to decorate. So I've already got this last of the toppers and then I have die cut this circle here. Just, I thought it was nice just to frame the topper so this is four inches and then this is just a doily so I'm going to add some foam on this piece first just to give it a little bit of dimension obviously you don't have to add a topper to the front it's completely optional stick that on there and then I used hot glue for everything else pop that one there just thought that doily was really nice to frame it and then put some more hot glue on there fold that flat again just a bit easier to stick this down and just pop that 
in the centre. And you could put something else along here if you want, maybe with some of those scraps I could cut a thinner strip, but I quite like that white um, overhang, and by the time I've got a tag and things on it anyway, I think that's all going to finish it off nicely. Okay, so there it is, finished. So actually I've just realised it's the same as the front and I didn't even plan that. So then I'm just going to feed it in here somewhere. Now I've got a ton of gift bags. Look at that. And again, it didn't take too long. You just kind of have to do a bit of a convey about. I went through and scored and burnished everything. Then I went through and cut the sides. Then I went through and put all the tape on. And then I went and put them all together. So all in all, it probably took me about an hour and a half to do all of that. I think it's a lovely little gift. Like I said, it's perfect for a craft fair. It's perfect to just donate for a raffle. I think it's a really handy gift. So yeah, I love this. So I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you're inspired. I hope it's helped those of you that asked about making gift bags with your eight by eight papers. I have a whole playlist full of fold flat gift bags. So they all vary in sizes, in style. So just go and check that out. I will link it up there. And if not, I would have linked it at the beginning as well anyway. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed today's tutorial and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.